views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Live an enlightened and authentic life by standing in your own power. Silver Gaio Radio, Journey to Gaio with Dr. Bree Gibbs brings forth new information supporting the ascension process happening on the planet now. Learn the true meaning of the word goddess and why each and every one of us is a divine being. Dr. Bree travels multiple worlds bringing through the unknown ancient knowledge and messages to help you remember who you truly are and live life with truth, trust, and passion. For more information about Bree's services and products, visit SilverGaia.com. Now, here's your host, Dr. Bree Gibbs. Welcome, everyone, to Silver Guy Radio. You know, this is going to be the most different show that you guys have ever heard me do. I'm not channeling, but I'm speaking my truth. There are so many people out here that are either um, alcoholics, reformed alcoholics, whatever you want to call them. Drug, they were drug abusers. They were, they've gone to jail. And they, ha- they are in the metaphysical field. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm one of them. I will not hide my shame because I don't even look at it as shame. I embrace my shadow side. I am who I am, and I will not hide it. I was 18 years old, 19. You know, I'm 57 now. But you know, I've talked about it, but I've never talked about it on Transformation Talk Radio. And so today's show is about facing those things and loving ourselves enough to say, yes, I've done these things. I can accept it. I'm not proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. But it got me to the point where I am today by speaking my truth. And everybody's all now on this kick about be your true authentic self. Well, you know what? Saying I used to use drugs or I used to use drink, drank a lot or whatever is being your true authentic self. Hi, Shauna. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. So what do you think about what I said? I mean, it's just right to the point, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, because you can't you can't get across the bridge if you don't acknowledge where you're coming from. Right. So what happened to me as a young child being abused, you know, I did something very dumb. It wasn't it was one of the minor crimes they ever could have you can have in your life, right? And I you know, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not a drug abuser. It's just things happened in my life, right? And I was sexually abused and my parents wouldn't let me talk about it. And my mom, my mom didn't know. My dad never made me keep my mouth shut. And, you know, it kind of threatened a young 18, eight-year-old girl that went all the way to 19. I, and finally, I opened my mouth, right? But here's the thing is, I, is in this lifetime, if you're really wanting to be that true goddess you are or the incarnated angel you are or whoever you are, you have to face all of this before you can be your true authentic self. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think so, for sure. I mean, none of us are exempt from woundedness. <laughs> um, and oftentimes, you know, very traumatic things happen that, you know, we cannot escape, we cannot deny, you know, we do eventually have to confront it, um, have it be because we're in the middle of an emotional crisis or a physical crisis. But there's other all kinds of different sorts of woundedness. You know, as human beings, we are so sensitive. And we're, and as you know, as you talk about all the time, um, a lot of us are, you know, on a different plane of sensitivity, you know, highly sensitive. Um, and so all kinds of different input and information affects us differently. So none of us are exempt from being wounded. Uh, and none of us are exempt from taking on in some way, shape or form the shame and the woundedness of our families that they end up passing on because they don't know what to do with it. So, right. you know, that's a very... I teach responsibility. I teach 100% responsibility. And it doesn't matter if you're an intuitive, a highly sensitive person, an empath. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is if you're going to go out there and be offering your gifts to the world, you need to have your own area kind of straightened up. 
um, if you're going to you. go and do that. And part Thank of that is obviously that. authenticity, honesty. Mm -hmm. And yeah, exactly what you said. You know, can I truly love and accept myself if I am not paying attention to my secrets, my demons, mistakes I've made, lessons I've learned, ways I've hurt other people? Can I really do that right. in the work I do? No. I don't think it's possible. If you if your intention is to go out there and be your most authentic self, then you have work to do. Mm -hmm. I know people are thinking it's so easy. And it's really not. It wasn't easy for me to face what I had done. So when it comes right out to it is I was 18 years old, wrote my own bad checks and got on probation. OK. So my parents paid them off, but, you know, I don't hide it. So why are people hiding this part of them that's in this metaphysical field? Is this what you want to call it? I don't like the word metaphysical, but why do they have to feel they have to hide it? Because I don't. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's like everyone else. <laughs> uh, you know, if you want to look at the ways human beings develop, uh, mm -hmm. we go through all kinds of phases where we're testing out different masks. That's what adolescence is about. It's about learning about who I am and how do I have to act with certain groups of people in order to be accepted. Right. So how we act with our family, as, even as adults, is different than how we act with our peers, which is different than how we act with our professional workmates, which is different than how we act with our children, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I feel like in what we've talked about, you and I have talked about before, is, you know, when people go out and they want to offer professional service, especially if it's in this realm, you know, mm -hmm. being an intuitive or reading cards or psychic or whatever, for some reason, they have this belief that they have to be perfect, but perfect in a way that is not real. And so that's kind of what you come up against a lot is this lack of authenticity in this field that you're in. And, you know, it's it's it goes right along with it's really not unusual. It's it's kind of across humankind, if you ask me. And a perfect example is looking at social media where you see all kinds of very lighthearted, simplistic ways that they are trying to have you, that they are promoting out there, people online with businesses, promoting self-care, self-love, whatever. But really, it's just a bunch of affirmations and very surface information. Yes. So again, yes. you know, that's fine. And, it, and I do see value in that, but you've got to pair it with really getting down to doing the work, which is what you're talking about. Open that closet door, mm -hmm. pull mm -hmm. all your stuff out, Right. And get real with it and get honest with it and embrace it and say, look, this happened. This was who I was at the time. This is not who I am now. And move forward with it. Because otherwise, you're not you're lying to yourself if you think you're being authentic. You're lying right. to yourself if you think you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's that can become a very slippery slope because then we can start to develop disease and illness and all kinds of other things that maybe we wouldn't be dealing with if we were really, really honest with who we are right here. Right. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, you know, and that comes into loving yourself. Do you love yourself enough to say, I did this, but I love myself to take care of the problem. So I got the counseling I needed, right? Because I can talk about things, right? So I got that. And then I started talking about it. And the more I talked about it, and it wasn't like I went all over the world talking about it, right? I went and got people that that could help me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got the help I needed, right? But you know what? Here's the thing is we all have some kind of past that we love ourselves enough to say, I can talk about it. I am not ashamed no more. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're big on is about helping people through their shame. Yeah. You know, um, you know, the one thing I want to say is I'm thankful for the past I have because I could not relate with some of my clients and my, I don't hide it from my clients. I, I, I tell them, right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to be a drug abuser. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to be an alcoholic, but I know what it's like to be on probation. Right. You know, and it's all know, a part of the human condition. I mean, right. it, you know, compassion can go a long ways. Right. And here's the thing. Um, the crime that I did of writing my own bad check, right. And we were just talking about before we started the show, is my grandfather went to the state pen in Walla Walla, right? For the same thing. And I've never and I'm adopted, and this is on my on my birth side, right? So one question I have 
is it could have came through the ancestral line also because I had never done anything illegal to them, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, wait a minute. And so, of course, I cleaned up all my lineage from my adopted side to, to um, you know, my my birth side, right? And so when when you clean that up on the, in the spiritual side of it, right? Man, what a relief. Mm -hmm. I don't have their garbage following me no more. Exactly. You know, so what do you what do you think about that? You can do it. I think it's twofold. You know, have if you can work with someone like you who can help you clean that up, mm -hmm. absolutely. Then you also have to do your own work on your side, because you're not magically going to be finding forgiveness and peace there, right? You need no. to do something proactive in order to clear that on your own side. You can do all kinds of different things. You can pick a project to make amends. Um, there's all kinds of different things you could do with that in terms of finding places that you could go volunteer that can help you give back, you know, yes, yes. it just really depends on what the situation is. Right. And I was fortunate enough to have my parents, you know, really well off to, to be able to pay that off because it was, it, it was a large amount. Yeah, that um, would have been following you for a long time. Yeah. No, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have been still in debt. No, no, I'm okay. it wasn't like that much, but, um, here's the thing. Is we only have a minute left before break, and then we're gonna get more about what you're what you're here about self love and everything. Um, this didn't even take courage for me to do this today. I want people to know that because you know people are like, are you afraid to talk about it? No, because this is how I was able to finally become my true authentic self. And so today, show was very important that one, you know, for truth about me. It's real simple. I'm not hiding behind a bottle. You know, I'm not hiding behind pills. I'm not hiding behind my shame. I love myself to say, I made a mistake. I'm here and I can be my true authentic self or the green goddess would never have came in. We'll be back in a few minutes more with Silver Guy Radio. crossroads in your life in need of answers trying to discover your life dream or how to manifest it dr katherine lehman with a team of angels guides master teachers has been helping people unveil the truth to the path of abundance and freedom for over 40 years training with shamans teachers and healers globally dr lehman will guide you to action and discovery your soul's path schedule a session today 951313 9513138541 Bree Gibbs is a fourth generation high priestess with the knowledge to raise your vibration and conscious creation. Offering a wide variety of services from goddess light and shamanic healing seminars to private reading sessions, Bree works with you so you too can stand in your own power. Isn't it about time you took your life into your own hands? For more information about Bree's services and products, visit silvergaia.com. That's silver, G A I A.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Earth is an ever-changing being. Goddess Light Shamanic Healer Brie Gibbs guides us through the ascending worlds, bringing forth knowledge and truth. As a light creator, she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution. Join Brie as she shares messages from guides, spirits, ascended masters, goddesses, and others. Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Crystal Voyage, located in Tacoma, Washington, is here to help guide your personal journey of awakening and raising your personal vibration. Tap into their on-site practitioners to choose from personalized readings, massage therapy, Reiki and energy healings, body-mind kinesis, life coaching, and many more modalities. Check out their store, showcasing an extensive array of crystals, stones, jewelry, books, and more. They also promote a network of readers offering animal communication, past life regression, aura cleaning and healing, channeled messages, 
numerology, and so much more. Visit their website at www.crystalvoyage.com to learn more. Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Woman of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Welcome back, everyone. So, Shauna, let's get to the real subject while you're here on love. You ready? Well, yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm, you know, this whole um, concept for me, I've been teaching for several years. Um, you know, mindfulness, self-care. I know that as women, we don't do a good enough job of taking care of ourselves. Uh, we work too much. Uh, we give so much of ourselves away when we're parenting to our spouses, so on and so forth. So we don't have enough for ourselves, you know, left at the end of the day. Um, but this and particular I, topic. Oh, go ahead. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's men also. I want sure. to put men in there mm -hmm. because um, a lot of these shows, I think, are just for women and our show is for <laughs> it's a, these shows for men, too. So men sometimes don't have that from working, coming home, paying sure. the bills, all that yeah. stuff. And they get so bogged down. And yeah, absolutely. And I, I taught a really great mindfulness class. Uh, I used to work at my community co-op and uh, I would use their classroom for free. And I had a lot of men who came to those classes. So good. yeah, it's totally not just women, but in general, we don't do a very good job of self-care because nobody taught us right. how to care for ourselves. We basically watched our parents work too much, hate their jobs, not have enough money, uh, whatever the situations were, we watched that and we were taught that. And so we go out and think, oh, this is just how it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, so I want to always introduce the concept that you can create something different if you choose. Um, you know, one saying I like to use a lot with my personal clients is if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. So if you want to do something different, you have to actually go out and create something different. So, you know, for me, yeah. looking, looking at social media and looking at how now social media has become such a huge part of people's daily lives, it's where a large percentage of Americans are getting their news from. Um, it's where, you know, a lot of people are, we're seeing new mental health issues now because people are looking at social media and it's causing more depression, more anxiety, panic. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, wow, this is really, it, social media can be useful in terms of finding resources and connecting with people you might not have a way to connect with, but in terms of our mental health and our self-care and how we're internalizing the information, it's become very negative. So, you know, I really want to combat what I see on social media, which is very simplistic concepts mm -hmm. in terms of self-care and being able to care for ourselves in a way that really fosters a real nurturing and love for ourselves. I like that. I really like that. So you sent me some paperwork over and I read that. And, you know, you're talking about I am 100% responsible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was 100 responsible for myself and for my actions. Is that just what you talk about also? Yeah. It's, it's being 100% responsible for my thoughts, feelings, and actions. That's mm -hmm. what 100% responsibility is. So I'm responsible for the energy that I put out into the universe. I'm responsible oh, yeah. for how I communicate with you. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for how I communicate with my class people. I'm responsible for how I communicate with my staff at work. Uh, I'm responsible for for how I go out into the world. Now, if somebody comes at me in a confrontational way and I react, and then I have to go apologize, that's being 100% responsible. <laughs> it's not going around to the other coworkers and saying, ooh, did you hear what so-and-so said to me? That's not responsible. So, you know, we have an obligation, and I know that you always like to tie this back to the field that you're in, that we're in. We have an obligation to be 100% responsible because this is what we were put here to do, whatever that looks like for us. Right. So we have to be responsible. You need to be transparent. You need to be authentic with yourself and honest with yourself and say, look, I'm not afraid of who I am and what I've done. This is it. Here it is. This is who I am. You decide. You know, if you want to work with me, awesome. If you don't, that's okay. It's it's not meant to be. You know, but I don't I don't think that I know that there's a lot of people out there coming out in a very unauthentic, fraudulent manner. 
Yes. Um, and and that's unfortunate because the people that they're kind of targeting don't have the ability maybe to sense, you know, that they're that they don't have their highest good in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, authenticity has many different faces and it has many different ways that it can be interpreted and used. Um, so for me personally, though, 100 percent responsibility, that's my commitment to myself first and then to the universe second. You know, and I incorporate it all into one. Because if I can't be honest with myself, you know, and I know the creator source is listening, right? Mm -hmm. And our guides and angels. Yep. And I'm not going to be authentic to them and then not be authentic with you or anybody else because that's not how it works. You have to be truly yeah. authentic, mm -hmm. you know, because your guides are going to go. I, that's what I want to say. A God smack on your head and say, oh. You know, mine would come from St. Germain. I know that for a fact. Like, what the heck you doing? You know? Right. Yep, absolutely. You can't fool the whole world, you know? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there are people oh, yeah. out there that have fooled the whole world. And then years later, they somebody finds out, oh, they went to jail. Big deal. You know, everybody tries to step on everybody else. Right. And I won't allow it, you know? Or, you know... I cannot relate with a drug addict because I've never been one. I can't relate with an alcoholic, but my dad was one. Mm -hmm. So I can understand from that side. Right. You know, so, and that's, that takes a lot of love to be able to do that and be true, authentic to relate with somebody. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I feel like authenticity is the, is the gateway to compassion. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of other people feel like compassion is the gateway to authenticity. But for me personally, if I'm not if I'm not 100 percent responsible right here for who I am and how I go out into the world and what energy I take. And like I already said, then how can I truly be compassionate with other folks who I don't know what their struggle is, but I know that it's a struggle. And that's really all I need to know as another human being is I get it. It's hard. Life is hard. We all have our stuff that we're dealing with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. My commitment is not to take my struggle out on anybody else, you know, and if I can help somebody bring awareness or even just give them a hug, a total stranger or pay for someone's groceries or pay for someone's coffee, then I'm going to do that because that's my commitment to the world and to the, to the universe at this point. Mm -hmm. But I could have never been there. I couldn't have gotten to that point if I hadn't gotten into my own closet, taken my skeletons out, looked at them, dealt with them found healing there, then I can go out into the world and know, okay, I know who I am. I know what I'm bringing to the table. This is who I am, world. You know, here I am. I love it. Shauna, I love it. That's why I just love having you on my on the show because this is not just my show. It's the whole family show. You're part of the family. You're one of the master teachers. And I love it because it's like, you know, you are so authentic to yourself. You've gone through your own struggles. There's things, you know, that we don't all like to talk about, you know, in our marriages or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There are some personal things, right? But, you know, but what you just said is so true. We had to go through these struggles to be our true authentic self. So it's not just a goddess anymore. It's not just being um, being able to be a trans medium. It's not being just a life coach or, uh, you know, empowerment coach. You have a lot behind you in the church, sis. Because you had, but here's the thing is you had to learn all this yourself before you could even become this life coach and nutritionist and everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My family was totally anti-education. My family was totally anti-advocacy. You know, children to, were to be seen and not heard. Uh, you know, very anti who I am today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really had to kind of blaze my own trail and figure out how do I want to live in this life? Because the way my family of origin taught me to live, I knew from a very early age that was not going to be the way for me to go. It didn't resonate with me. It felt like nails on the chalkboard, <laughs> you know, sandpaper. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that just was not who I was going to be. And that was really hard, obviously, when you're going through adolescence, because you're sitting there going, wow, my own family doesn't even get who I am. But well, that's not a new problem. So no, know. it's not. But you know, this is where I'm lucky, even though the situation I had as a child, I was lucky to have my mother, where I could 
still stay in the goddess light, mm -hmm. but I had to keep the secret, but That's I was sure. still able to do my work and train. And I right. really believe my guides and guardians and source and mother goddess Gaia and the green goddess, they all kept me protected enough to be able to stay on some kind of path. Absolutely. And then when it was over, um, I was able to come back, do my work and I'm fine, you know? So, but I mean, I you know, feel the same way. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear that. I feel that. the same way, totally. Yeah, yeah. I've talked There's definitely a greater power at work, um, right? You know, to keep me focused and and to get me where I am today. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have lots to do every day. You know, um, I had um, a situation that, um, yesterday that I had to deal with, right? And I had to put myself and go, okay. Um, Am I willing to take this responsibility on or not? It's not my responsibility, but am I willing to take this this matter on to help this person? Well, I help the person in another way. So I didn't take the responsibility on. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. That's good. That's it's too easy to do. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody who's an empath knows that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and we're going to talk about a little bit about empaths when we come back. We're going to take care a break here in a second. Um, good. Because I want to talk about empaths because empaths, and I'm one, are sometimes blaming the wrong people. So we'll come back in a few minutes with more Silver Guy and Shawna Michaels. Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLuce.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S. Com. Every day is another opportunity to bring magic into our world and create the reality we want to live. Intuitive Juliana Salofia and the Lady of Light New Age Boutique are here to help you on your journey. Whether you're looking for a reading, a workshop, or a class of the latest and unique metaphysical products or jewelry, the Lady of Light New Age Boutique has it all. Visit InspiredNewAge.com to schedule a session or class and feel the energy of the Lady of Light. If you have been struggling with fear and anxiety, you know how debilitating these emotions can be. You constantly doubt yourself, you can't make decisions, and feel more and more insecure and stuck. Dr. Friedman Schaub's book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, will provide you with the insights and tools to break through these challenges. Through a step-by-step -step process, Dr. Schaub explains how to resolve the subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety and build a strong foundation of inner peace and confidence. Visit www.thefearandanxietysolution.com and get your copy now. Order your copy of Dr. Friedemann Schaub's The Fear and Anxiety Solution today. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com for more information. Earth is an ever-changing being. Goddess Light Shamanic Healer Brie Gibbs guides us through the ascending worlds, bringing forth knowledge and truth. As a light creator, she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution. Join Brie as she shares messages from guides, spirits, ascended masters, goddesses, and others. Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Crystal Voyage, located in Tacoma, Washington, is here to help guide your personal journey of awakening and raising your personal vibration. Tap into their on-site practitioners to choose from personalized readings, massage therapy, Reiki and energy healings, body-mind kinesis, life coaching, and many more modalities. Check out their store, showcasing an extensive array of crystals, stones, jewelry, books, and more. They also promote a network of readers offering animal communication, past life regression, aura cleaning and healing, channeled messages, numerology, and so much more. Visit their website at www.crystalvoyage.com to learn more.
Welcome back, everyone. So, Shauna, I want to talk to you about empaths. I am an empath, and you know that. A very strong empath, okay? Where I can feel people's emotions when I don't even try. And I have to walk away and, you know, make sure that my boundaries are set and, I'm, you know, whatever I have to do so I don't feel people's emotions, right? Because I don't want to feel them all the time. It's none of my business, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. and it's not my business to know or feel or anything that I don't want to feel. But the one thing I am going to get on my soapbox about here for a second, before you get on yours, I'm pointing at the screen going, going on yours. Um, empaths need to stop blaming everybody for their problems. Here's I what agree. I, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying this. So it's like, I only got rage on the, in the car because I could feel the energy in the next car. Nope. Are you serious? <laughs> I decided mm -hmm. I decided I was going to get angry at this woman at the mall because I didn't I could feel her anger are you serious when are impasse going to quit blaming everybody else but themselves yeah well and the other thing I see is I happen to be in an empathic group on Facebook which is not a good idea I don't recommend it no I, I um, went on it just to see <laughs> what it was like and I'm yeah. reading this stuff. It's I'm total, watching. yeah, total victim. You know, everything's happening to me. Um, this is too hard. I don't know how to do this. And I can't go to work this week because of blah, blah, blah. Then you get and people like me that says, grow up. Uh, <laughs> it's not because you're an empath. It's because you just don't want to be your true authentic self and, and start taking responsibility of who you are. So go, yeah, that Facebook thing yeah, was exactly. gone off mine. Exactly. Well, and then again, you know, and I have a few clients I've worked with who have come in and they work um, in a consulting type work, uh, uh -huh. mostly in healthcare, and they come in drained. They don't even have any idea of their impasse. As soon as they walk in the door, I'm like, oh, OK, I'm seeing part of the problem here. So once we teach them about boundaries and being 100 percent responsible for themselves and like you always recommend, the pink bubble is very effective. Um, just putting some of these concepts in movement for them, then they're able to go, oh, okay, I'm okay. Now I'm being responsible for where I end and the rest of the world begins because that's really how it is for an empath is you're sitting there being you. And again, like I said, during break, the heart chakra is kind of too open uh, and everything's come kind of coming in and attacking and overwhelming the senses. But CMS. isn't there, there is a way they can control that though. Cause I leave well, mine wide open. Yeah, I think, but you have boundaries though. Like you said, yes. you go away and you gather yourself and you come back and you say, okay, I need to turn this off right now. Right now, this isn't working. You know, whatever your strategies are. Right. See, the, the thing I see with empaths is they're not looking for strategies. They're going, they've identified somehow that they're an empath and they're out there just completely vulnerable and just giving everything away. And as an empath, that's, that's a kiss of death. You are going to have a really tough life with panic and anxiety and depression and all kinds of other things if you don't get that under control. So going back to the 100% responsibility, I'm responsible for what I bring into the world, my energy, my thoughts, feelings, actions. I've got to find a way to harness that, protect my heart chakra a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You can find a win-win there where you can still find value and hear people and help people, but you're not going overboard and sacrificing yourself in the process. Do you think that pe there are some people that use that the excuse they are an empath? That's the reason they behave this way? Absolutely. That's what I see more times than not. I'm so I glad to hear that. I really yeah. am. And I'm not laughing because it's like, <clears throat> I'm so tired of saying, I'm an empath, or people, not me. I'm an empath, and this is, I've been told I'm an empath, and this is why I behave the way I do. I'm not going, apples and oranges, guys. Apples and oranges, completely different. Yeah, it's not an excuse. Um, mm -hmm. being an empath is, is a gift. And if you can learn enough about it to realize it's a gift and it's a huge responsibility, thank you. Then you're going to have a little bit different take on how you're going to go out into the world with this gift. Right. And I, and this is where I've worked with people one-on-one -on -one saying, okay, look into what being empathic is and then see how, what ways you, it seems that you're doing this. And then we're going to work on ways to conserve your energy and not, not take on everybody's stuff because that's what ends up happening is you know you get your little backpack and you stuff everybody's crap in it and you're packing that around on a daily basis of people that you may not even know uh -huh. so that is not responsible it's very it's very self-deprecating it takes a lot of emotional mental energy to do that and that can't 
that's just not a good system of functioning if you're if you're an empath. And yeah, on what you said, they use it as an excuse and I see it as they can keep themselves as a victim of other things that they have going on, like depression, anxiety, and things like that. You know, the victim role is so overplayed. That's the way I want to put it. It's so overplayed, it's pathetic. And I am not saying this to be rude and mean to somebody. You know, I could have played the victim and got lots of attention. It wasn't worth it to me. Mm -hmm. Once I was able to tell my mom what happened to me and we went through the legal system, you know, and got that all taken care of, right? I was able to finally start to learn to heal. Now, it took years to get to this point where there was no shame. Right. So I want people to know, one, you can't do this in a year or two. It's years of repair. Well, it's a, it's a commitment to your journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, you know, I, yes, I guess my life could end tomorrow. But if it did, I know that I've done well in my life and that I've taken care of myself in a way that I was not taught to do. I taught myself to do that. Um, you know, and if we can't lay down our heads at night and feel like, yeah, today I did a good job. Today I took care of myself. Today my children are safe. I'm healthy. I have food. I have a roof over my head. If I can't do those things, then if I can't go to bed at night and feel that way, then yeah. I mean, how do I get up the next day and move, move forward? You have to take responsibility for what you've done in life. And a lot of times you have, we try and take responsibility for what was done to us. And that's where we get wrapped up in that shame and it becomes a burden and we can develop some mental illness issues after that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not being a victim is the opposite of being 100% responsible, really. Or excuse me, being a victim is the opposite of being 100% responsible. You know, we all have times where we want to wallow, right? We're like, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible person. I did this, I did that. And that's okay to temporarily be there, mm -hmm. right? But it's getting out of that that elevates us up and provides adversity for growth. Wow. I think we're all going to be victims at some point. It's okay. It's just make it temporary. Make sure you have people around you that can listen and help you get through that, you know, mm -hmm. and not encourage you to stay there. And I feel like, I feel like empaths sometimes encourage people to stay there, to kind of stay stuck in that victim. I don't know what to do. I don't, you know, where you're kind of spinning your wheels. Right. And again, I'm not saying anything derogatory. I don't mean it that way. Right. But it's, you have to be careful about who you're, you're going to work with, I guess mm -hmm. is my point to that. You know, right. And educate and, yourself. And, right. You know, the one thing is, um, I did my, um, theology and, um, you know, my medical science with Dr. Judith Belshire. She's um, transitioned off the planet a few years ago. Um, wonderful, amazing woman, right? And when I told her, you know, about me and stuff, and she goes, well, why do you think you had to go through all that? Why, why do you think? And I said, so I could relate with others. And she goes, one day you're going to learn more. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn more. <laughs> why I went through it, right? All right, so I embraced my shadow side, right? And we go through many shadow sides. But the one I knew that I was coming up for, I was looking for a shaman with, with, with yeah, me that doesn't do nothing, right? Um, with peyote, uh, marijuana, I didn't care because I knew it was going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, so it didn't happen, right? Where I got to go, I found the shaman. Right. But it didn't happen. And what happened was it hit me at 830 in the morning. OK, so Stephanie, that's coming back to the air. She's been off for a while. Um, I had her on speed dial number nine. Right. Not love potion number nine. Believe me, it was speed dial number nine. And like I say, Stephanie is happening now and it's happening after my husband leaves to work. You know, all this. Right. And I. The reason I'm there's a really big reason why I'm talking about this. And so when I went through the shadow side, of course, I asked Spirit to forgive me. I asked my God's guy. I asked with my guides. I was talking to all, I was talking to Merlin. I was talking to St. Germain. I was talking to all the ascended masters. I could think, why did I have to go through this? Why are you showing me this? Okay. And when I saw that, it made me understand why I did what I did in this lifetime. 
I hurt a lot of people in my past lifetimes. These hands were like, you know how you hear a lethal weapon hands, right? Well, they were very, back then, they were very lethal. And, and you know, and I killed a lot of people and I hurt a lot of people and I did things and I locked people up. And in this lifetime, I'm the one that needed to feel the locking up. Mm -hmm. And it made sense to me because if I hadn't have gone to jail and been locked up, how many people could I have hurt because of what was done to me? That came after the last dark night of soul. And it made really a lot of sense to me. Right. So it makes sense how you could get to a point where you're like, this is not a shameful fact. It's Correct. just a fact. And I'm able to share it with people so that I can say, hey, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. No big deal. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's, you know, that's a very heightened self-awareness. Thank you. I've never thought about that. But anyway, that's what she said one day you would, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking as we're talking about it, that's what she said to me. And it's like, and I realized, you know, of course I can't throw fire out of my hands in this lifetime. Right. But <laughs> darn you know, it. Yeah. Darn it. Sometimes I wish I could. No, I'm on the key. Um, yeah. When they keep littering my yard, it's like, you know, phew, <laughs> somebody in the butt with a little spark anyway. But uh, when we come back, I want to talk more about that because, you know, the enlightenment and heightening of who we are and why we are here and, and, you know, and why you're on the show today. So we're going to talk more about that. We go back, we're back okay. more with Shauna and Silver Guy Radio. Robbins, published author and channel, connects our hearts to the hearts of beings in advanced civilizations as she taps into the cosmos. We are living in important times now as we merge our consciousness with these of other realms and raise our vibration and awaken to who we are and why we are here. Learn to live in unconditional love. Visit DianeRobbins.com today and immerse yourself in the many books, newsletters, and channeling Diane has to offer. Bree Gibbs is a fourth generation high priestess with the knowledge to raise your vibration and conscious creation. Offering a wide variety of services from goddess light and shamanic healing seminars to private reading sessions, Bree works with you so you too can stand in your own power. Isn't it about time you took your life into your own hands? For more information about Bree's services and products, visit silvergaia.com. That's silvergaia.com. Crystal Voyage, located in Tacoma, Washington, is here to help guide your personal journey of awakening and raising your personal vibration. Tap into their on-site practitioners to choose from personalized readings, massage therapy, Reiki and energy healings, body-mind kinesis, life coaching, and many more modalities. Check out their store, showcasing an extensive array of crystals, stones, jewelry, books, and more. They also promote a network of readers offering animal communication, past life regression, aura cleaning and healing, channeled messages, numerology, and so much more. Visit their website at www.crystalvoyage.com to learn more. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the human of the giant cosmic joke. Visit thetruthisfunny.com. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. 
Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, everyone. We're back with Shauna Michaels. So, Shauna, we only have a few minutes left. So what else would you like to talk about and let people know that's important? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think probably the most important concept that I like to talk to people about who come in for one-on-one and their lives are not working for them on whatever level that might be, um, is really, you know, starting to become aware of what our family of origin teaches us about who we are, how we're going to be loved, how we can ask to be loved, what's acceptable, what isn't acceptable. Uh, We start receiving all that information the moment we come home into that family unit. So Uh we are constantly observing how our siblings interact with our parents, how our parents interact with each other, how our parents interact with us, so on and so forth. Wonderful book. It's hard to find, but it's called Tattooed in the Cradle. Very, very, very interesting book on the family of origin dynamics that, you know, really every... Can you say that name one more time? Tattooed in the Cradle. Um, And it's what it does really, what it talks about is the cellular impressions that are made on us as human beings in regards to love and acceptance and how we fit into a fam- to our family. So I kind of bring it up with clients and then we get more into what their family of origin looked like. And the importance of that and how what we're talking about today is, is what were we taught about what's acceptable for us in terms of how we are going to be loved? Because that right there lays the framework for how we're going to love ourselves. If I can't ask my mom for a hug or to love me because of some something, Uh, going on there where that's just not part of the deal, then that's probably going to be, I'm going to probably run into that again in another part of my life. I'm either not going to be able to be very affectionate with my friends. I may have some affection issues in my relationships. I may have issues with hating myself, you know, self-hate, cutting, um, all kinds of different things. All these different areas manifest differently with different people. But Mm -hmm. the point of it is, is that it's very important to become aware of what did I learn? What was I taught? Because we carry that away. I mean, we pack that away in our cells uh, and and we will act those things out as we get older and and function in life and especially under stressful situations like what you're talking about. Right. That is so true. Yeah. So when we have a traumatic event happen, we go back to a very cellular base of survival mode, which Mm -hmm. is where we're taught by our family of origin how we're going to survive. So if we're not loved, if we didn't bond well with a parent, if, you know, we're raised by a sibling or all of these different things come into play about how we're going to, what survival looks like for us. And we can, it can go a couple different ways. Like you're saying, that can be the source of addiction. It can be the source of mental illness. It can be the source of, you know, all the, all the different ways that human beings choose to, to release pain by cutting, um, whatever. There's just a myriad of different ways that we do that, you know, going out and committing crimes, um, right. being hurt, you know, hurting other people. Um, so that's what I really like people to kind of start to become aware of. Um, I don't like to dawdle there. I don't like to spend a lot of time there. Uh, but I think it's really important to bring awareness because once you become aware, you have the ability and the power to make change. If you're not aware of it, you can't change anything. So, you know, just really helping people understand that, if you have had stuff happen with you, guess what? You're a human being. <laughs> Welcome oh, to well, the tribe. You I'm know, telling you. Exactly. We all come from sources of woundedness. And as you, as you said, and as I believe too, and has been my experience, I am very grateful for all of the traumatic and painful things that happened to me in my life. Because I'm, I wouldn't be who I am today if not for all of those things happening. And, you know, there's, and we all have a lot of loss. You know, we all have painful stuff. We all have stuff that we feel ashamed about. But coming to terms with those things and finding a way to make amends is the most powerful and responsible thing you could ever do in your life and for your children and your and your current family. It's a huge You know, gift. the one thing, um, I've met um, some very prominent people that um, have been in prison for a very long time, okay? Like they did like 10 years or whatever, right? 
And now they're out there um, working with children, trying to keep them out of gangs, you know, all those things. And they're in a metaphysical world, and I'm not going to name them. I don't have their permission right now. If I did, then I would. Um, but they're doing so much. Yep. But then they don't hide it. Yeah. They're and making amends. They're making amends for what they feel was their crime, and their that is 100% responsibility. Mm-hmm. It is. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, whatever. Why do you think, why do you think people hide it, though? Why do you well, think? Well, shame. <laughs> I mean, shame, of course. I mean, well, I work you feel, with people. But but I, I understand what you're saying on shame, but do you ever feel like they're going to be judged or they're they're just afraid to bring it out? Um, yes, I think a little of both. I think it's difficult for them to be able to deal with it because of whatever family has said, you know, you're a horrible person. I don't love you anymore. You can't be a part of this family. You know, whatever uh-huh. those things are. All of those things come into play with people who have done stuff that they feel is not good, you know, right. or a crime or a naughty thing or whatever. And that just goes back to those it. teachings. Right. Yeah, it just so like with me, it made me stronger. It, yeah. You know, um, the truth well, you found a way teaching. around it. You found yeah. a way to accept it and say, yes, this is what I did. And I'm not going to do that again. Oh, my gosh. Live radio Sorry. from home. <laughs> I've been through it. That's Sorry. why I got in the office. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we just this is how it happens just gotta have fun it and, is you know that's part of this is silver guy radio is is to have fun <laughs> yeah. and you know last week was a really um um it was a hard show last week for me because that's the first time i brought the green goddess through and part of, i i felt like i was drunk during the whole time i was gone i come back gone come back and and then I just said, yeah, Susan, I want to cry. I remember saying that. I've had to listen to the show four times just to hear, remember what I said, right? It wasn't me. It was her talking, right? Yeah. And then the parts <laughs> I was talking, I don't even remember. It was like, yeah. And so, you know, what you're doing with the dogs, I was doing too. <laughs> you're just like, come They're on. Like, well, no, who's at my door? Who's barking? But this is, yeah. this is why we have fun. But, you know, it was the subject that we're talking about is so important today that people want to understand they are not alone. So how can they, and there is something they can do. See, I think that's where people get stuck is they Uh feel like, yes, this happened and they may have some awareness of it, but it, it, they don't know what to do. And so they just kind of keep pushing it back and repressing it because they don't know how to do anything with it. So, uh, so you can contact me through Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Okay. And and they can uh, and they can find you on Silver Guy Radio, um, yep. www.silverguy.com. They can find mm-hmm. you that that way. Mm-hmm. Also, you're one of the math teachers on there. Yep. I mean, isn't it nice and refreshing that we can just be open and honest, even on the airways with each other? I love it. Well, I think it brings uh, credibility, you know, to the field because that's it's not something that is easy to come by in my in my world, in in what I've experienced personally. And that's sad. Mm-hmm. It's sad, yeah. Because I've never hid hid my shame mm-hmm. or my mistakes, whatever you want to call it. I've right. never hid it. Um, I only bring it out when all of a sudden the guys are telling me I need to bring it out. And today was one of those days, you know. And <laughs> you hit it out of the park. Knows? You know. And here's the thing: is you never know. Maybe one sentence, one word, one person listening. I don't know how many people are listening right now, right? And how many will listen to the replays. But maybe it's going to help one person. If I can just help one person to let them know that they're not alone today and you've let them know they're not alone, they, you know, it works out wonderful for me. That's right. As now, my very good friend and mentor says, there are no accidents. No. So whoever's supposed to be listening will be listening. And there's no coincidence either that why we're doing this show today. I really <laughs> believe that. Um, you know, Shauna, it's amazing the things that you teach people. And I can't wait till we do the nutrition show. Oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. Awesome. So so we got over the teeth problem, right? Okay. Good. And now next show we're gonna do is about nutrition because Bree needs to lose the weight problem now. Uh, okay, so here's the thing is we are no we only got one minute left. We are no longer to say lose. We are releasing mm-hmm. because you Absolutely. look for what's lost. You don't look for yes. what you release. That's right. You're releasing so, what no longer serves you. That's right. And yeah. uh, this uh, few pounds, um, not just five pounds, it's like, you know, 30, uh, 40 pounds. It doesn't pounds. matter. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, you know, I foot. Um, 
Anyway, but basically happening is happening. It's going to be released, and so we're going to do it next time we see you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you, everyone, for joining Silver Guy Radio, and we'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to Silver Gaia Radio, Journey to Gaia. Join Dr. Bree Gibbs the second and fourth Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. Each show is designed to share and discuss timely key messages and truths. Dr. Bree brings forth gods and goddesses, ascended masters, and others to communicate the information our world needs. For more about Dr. Bree or Silver Gaia Radio, visit SilverGaia.com, and we'll see you next time.